Uh, two here. This is one of my favorite things. If you look at the males get older and they'll discover that the, the restaurants out here on the Aleutian Islands are the best. So these, these male adult male elephant seals, the, the old timers, they swim in almost a straight line, mm. which is an amazing feat in and of yeah, itself. Totally. You know, you go out here in the ocean and you go a couple miles and you're you're in a fog bank. How do you know where you're going? And we don't know how they navigate. Uh, the, the, the scientists uh, basically say by the process of elimination, they think it's got to be geomagnetic somehow or other, but they don't know what senses they have. Uh, uh, you know, uh, many birds they found iron crystals in their in their in their skulls, and that can act like a compass. So that that's understandable. For elephant seals, we, we still don't know what they do. So so the by the process of basically they know what's in the bottom where the male elephant seals eat. They know that, uh, therefore, they eat on, uh, whatever they find, basically. Um, the females, if you'll notice, the females, if you look at, that's, that's a pretty random pattern. Uh, so they're, they're not going any place. As a matter of fact, we have some uh, that have swum almost all the way to Japan the last, the last couple of years. It's hmm. literally 3,000 mile wow. round trip uh, from here. Uh, and for the longest time, they, they thought that the, their primary food was the animal that left this behind when they would when they checked the stomach contents of the females when they were tagging them. So, let me see where it is. Yeah, they, had, they would find these things. You guys know what those are? Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, no, nope. this is, we're talking about in the middle of the ocean. A monster. Monster. Oh. Um, no, well, it could be, yes. Uh, part of that answer is absolutely true. Vampire squid actually, I think, can live much deeper than these guys can go, even though these are the champion seal divers. They've measured dives over 5,700 feet, right a mile straight down. But you're close. What do you think those are? It's like a claw of some kind. It looks like a claw. Not a claw. It's not. An octopus beak or a squid. What? Very good. So um, you said squid, so we'll give you full credit for that. Right? <laughs> so I'd like to point out that even though you think this is a silly toy, it's actually an anatomically correct. <laughs> so you can see. But that's, that's what they thought for the longest time. And just recently, a uh, PhD candidate from UC Santa Cruz once again said, Well, I want to know for sure. So, you know, uh, uh, technology has advanced uh, very quickly. And they are, she was able to uh, equip some female elephant seals, and all you can't see it, they, she glued an, a, um, an accelerometer to the jaw of this female elephant seal. Do you guys have any experience with accelerometers? You're holding one. <laughs> you ever wonder how your phone knows which way is up? It's right. a little tiny accelerometer, so you move it and it, because of gravity, and it says, oh. So that would allow her to know when the jaw was open. She put an infrared camera on the head, glued it on the head, and a depth meter, and she triggered the whole system when it got below 500 feet. And I, I think you can find uh, pictures of it. She did a presentation for us. Uh, and, and basically all you see are flashes of flashes of stuff. It looks like fins and so on. And the scientists that know what they those fins look like, they were able to identify it. And they said, oh, well, there's a lantern fish. Wow. This is cool. a lantern fish. You see, see wow. how big it is? You see what it's sitting on? Yeah. yeah. Right, so it's, you know, it's an inch, a couple inches long. And the reason they call a lantern fish is, um, it's hard to see, but there are little tiny dots on, on the side of that. Those are photophores, right? You know what photophores do? Glow? Yes. They glow, they give off light. So bioluminescence, uh, turns out, bioluminescence is um, the rule underwater. Unlike on land where we don't need, you know, we don't need light, the sun's out, we can see everything. Underwater is dark, so uh, animals, many, many animals have developed the ability to, to uh, uh, bioluminesce. And this is just one example of one of the reasons. That's cool, that's okay? cool. You can see this is a, this is a shrimp and it's being hassled by something. So it actually can eject a glowing ink. So if you're trying to catch that squid and all of a sudden you're surrounded by a cloud of glowing ink, you're probably not gonna catch the squid. Um, so 
so she she did this. They looked at the flashes and they and they said, oh, the primary food then is lanternfish. And they said, well, we got a thousand pound animal. How can I make these little tiny fish? So they went back through and they counted it and. And their one day total, they came up with a thousand of them. She had wow. A thousand, a thousand lantern fish wow. a day. And then they said, well, wait a minute, that's an awful lot of lantern fish. How many lantern fish are there in the ocean? They went back and did a biomass calculation, did, you know, did uh, statistical analysis of, of some trawls they took. They now think that lantern fish are the single most common vertebrate animal in the whole world. Really? Yes. I think there are a thousand wow. children of them. Wow. It's good news for the elephants. <laughs>